Okay. So the first question we got comes from two point whatever or two point three point what'd you say? Three point two. Three point two. I can't think. Go ahead and snip it. problem <coughs> and here is the solution Or we could put it to the difference question if you want to. Come on, where's my whips and chains? Where are, where are y'all people at? Let's put it to the difference question. That would be 2.4 to the x to the x plus h minus 2.4 over h. You want to do the calculus? Okay, the calculus is in the blue. I'll do the derivative of pi squared for you. What's the derivative of pi squared? Zero. So I'll, I'll do that one for you. So what's the derivative? So basically, just throw the 3 to, to the second power away, because that's a constant. Throw it away. So 2.4 to the x is equal to what? 2.4 to the x times the natural log of what? 2.4. That's one of those that I said that you should just be able to what? Plug and what? Memorize, plug and chug. There's not much math or calculus in that. So you want me to give you 10 of those on the test? Y'all yes, suck. All right, let's do another. Does that, does that yeah. help you? Okay. Now, I got some problems for y'all. I said I'll pick some problems that y'all might see. And then I got some problems for unit five to do. So let's start off with this one since we're reviewing for the test. F of X is equal to four plus X to the fourth raised to the two-thirds power. And we want the derivative. How do you know you want the derivative? Well, I don't have a squiggly line in front. Duh. Squiggly line means the antiderivative. This is out of unit three, chapter three. So what rule? Chain. Chain rule. Good. I'm impressed. I have to leave here, go to my attorney's office, meet in my attorney's office, then come back up here for bridge orientation. Bridge orientation is right now? Yeah. <laughs> I just tell them they, they, they need to quit. Out. Yeah, I tell them they need to quit. Tell them they need to take Mohammed Kabati for their first semester. Yeah. Yeah. You're not done. Really? <laughs> no, it looks good, except for you need to put the radical. Because I want the radical in the answer, probably. Yeah. 
you don't have to rationalize, but but we could. No, we could. What you drinking in that cup? Anything good? It's like Dunkin' Donuts. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather just drink dirt water. You like coffee? I can't. I can't taste it. Can't taste coffee. When I taste coffee, I taste hot water. That's what I taste. There's no. No taste to so it to me. When you drink soup? Huh? I don't eat soup. I eat stew. You know, it has that has stuff in it. But when I drink coffee, I mean, y'all think I'm crazy. People's taste buds are different. You know, some people love to drink beer, like in the morning, like. You know. You don't drink beer in the morning? No, I don't. I'm not an alcoholic. Um, <laughs> That's what they all say. But some people taste beer different. Some people can't stand the taste of it. What's the difference in somebody that can't stand the taste of beer and somebody that can't stand the taste of coffee? What's the difference? Some people can taste different. Some people love to smoke Marlboro Reds. I can't stand even being in the room with somebody that, you know, smokes Marlboro Reds. Ooh. But that goes back to my drill instructor. Anyway. Some people smoke those cigarettes that have no filters on them. Camels. That gum. That's rough. I roll my own cigarettes. Okay. My uncle does. He's been smoking since he was like nine. Dang old Prince Albert. Thing old tin can. Wait, well, it used to be tin cans. I still got tin cans from my grandfather. Seriously? They're about twenty-five dollars a piece now. Those little tin cans, little flip, little Prince Albert cans. But why doesn't everybody smoke? Because some people are smart. No, because some people don't get the high that, or not the high, but the Whatever you get when you smoke cigarettes. I don't know if it's a it's nicotine, nicotine rush bars. or whatever. Some people don't get that. <clears throat> so don't condemn me because I don't drink coffee. Oh, I got to give you an in-class test. Today? This no. is the first question, right? I just got to give you an in-class test so you all can complain and your grade will go down. That's a joke. <laughs> Yeah, everybody will have dead grandmothers on the in-class test, so I can't announce it. Two-thirds times four plus x to the fourth to the two-thirds minus three-thirds times the derivative of what's inside, which is four x what? the third. Now I'm going to put a baby step in here because some people get all twisted up when they see all this. So I'm going to write it as 2 over 3 times 4 plus x to the fourth to the negative what? Over one times four x to the third over one. Now the reason I wrote it like that is so you will know that you need to do what with this guy? What do you need to do with this old guy right here? Flip it. Mm-hmm. This right here needs to flip, so that gives you, that's prime of x, that's prime of x, 2 over 3, 1 over 4 plus x to the 4th to the 1 3rd times 4 x squared over 1. 
and now just put everything together. 2 times 1 times 4x squared is 8x cubed. Oh, cubed. Thank you. Cubed. Miss Bowers is not here. You have to take over for her. All right. And then 3 times the cube root of 4 plus x to the fourth. Now, if this was a test question, I would take this or I would take the radical not there, either one. 4 plus x to the fourth to the one-third power. Now, this is a challenge question. This is a question that you can get points for if you write it in the other way. If you write it without the radical and they mark it wrong, then you should see me and I'll give you the points for it. I'll take it with the radical or without. The test or the homework might want the radical, okay, or vice versa, not want the <coughs> x -bar. Okay. All right, now let's move on to one that's a little bit more challenging. I have to write on the board for this one because I can't write all this. f of x is equal to... Yeah, just come on in whenever. That's fine. Not that you have to drive 50 miles. Interacting with the something's not I'll figure that out while y'all are doing the problem. F of X is equal to parentheses T to the fourth. Minus 1 to the ninth power times t to the third plus 1 to the eighth power. First times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. You got two terms there. Yeah. 
That is a time. Yep. Back where we were at the beginning of the semester. So that's not running on the board? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the computers. There's something unplugged. I don't know. There's no, there's no plugs back here. That's not it. That's something else. I think this.
whatever it's called. Notice that it. Well. Oh well. Equals first. It's going to be so aggravating. T to the fourth minus one to the ninth power first times the derivative of the second. Chain rule. Eight T to the cubed plus one. What's eight minus one? Seven. And then what's the derivative of what's inside? 3t squared. 3t squared. So that's your first part. And I will highlight this. This right here is chain rule. Plus the second. I don't know what that is. Second. times the derivative of the first, which would be 9 t to the fourth minus 1 to the eighth power times the derivative of what's inside, and that is 4 t cubed. <coughs> and that is the what? chain rule. So, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So you're using the product rule with the chain rule inside it. So now, clean it up. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take 8 and I'm going to multiply by that 3t and I'm going to pull that out front. So, 8 times 3 is 24 t to the second times this mess t to the fourth minus 1 to the ninth power times t cubed plus 1 to the seventh power plus 9 times 4 is what? 36t to the third times t cubed. I'm going to put t to the fourth first because I got t to the fourth over here. t to the fourth minus 1 to the eighth power times t cubed. plus 1 to the 8th power. Okay? Now what? Well, let's go back to pre-algebra. 2x squared y to the 4th minus 4 x, y to the third. <coughs> what do you do there? Do not pronounce it. What is that? Well, okay, y'all can't spell. Factor, out, common, term. I told I told students one time, I said, don't pronounce it, just spell it. And I had a complaint. So then I had to change it. 
and I've changed it to this. That's even worse. So, <laughs> factor out a common term or factor out a common multiple. Now you're going to remember it. What's in, what's in common? Well, you factor out the common two. And then what rule do you use about exponents when you factor? Do you pick the highest exponent or the lowest exponent? Lowest. You're all supposed to say that at one time. And now that will give you your answer. So now let's take this pre-algebra stuff that we learned and go back and factor this out. No, that's too complicated. I don't want to think that much. Well, I'm sorry. You know how to do it. You just... What is, yeah. So what's in common with 24t squared and 36t to the third? Four T what? Everybody should be saying that at one time. Yes, pre-algebra, yeah. Four T squared. All right, what's in common with this to the ninth and this to the eighth? What's the lowest exponent? Okay, what's lower? Nine or eight? Thank you. T fourth minus one to the eighth. Okay, now this is another hard question. What's lower, seven or eight? Seven. T to the third plus one to the seventh. And now you write what else, what's left. Well, what do you do when you factor? What's the operation? There's four operations in math. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. What do you do when you factor? Divide, Hubert. That's right, class. So what is 24 divided by 4? What's t to the second divided by t to the second? 1. What's t to the fourth minus 9 divided by t to the fourth minus 8? T to the fourth minus one to the first power, which really is T to the fourth minus one. That be yeah, that's what I thought. What? What are you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Four divided by four is six. Oh, I'm sorry. I do that a lot. I do that a lot. The eight is eight is not my favorite number. I don't know how to add them. I don't know how to subtract them. And I mess up with my multiplication. You ever have a number that you don't like? Yes, Hubert. No, Hubert. I don't know what you're talking about, Hubert. Thank you, class, for being interactive. I'm going to get Mohammed Gobadi in here to substitute for about a week. All right. What is t to the third plus 1 over 7 divided by t to the third plus 1 over 7? And now move to the next one. What's 36 divided by 4? See, I can do that one. T to the third divided by T to the square. T to the first. And then what's 8 minus 8? 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And T to the third to the 8th power over T to the third plus 1 to the 7th power is T to the third plus 1 to the first power, which is t to the third plus one. Now you just clean this up. This I'm going to write as a squiggle because I'm not going to write that 15 times. So that stays the same. So I'm going to take my highlighter and we're going to color it green. And this is part of your answer. I'm just going to make this green into a squiggle, meaning all this comes down to the final answer. Now, let's clean this up. Okay, 6 times 1 is 6. So that would be 6t to the 4th minus 6 plus 
9t to the what? Fourth plus 9t. And multiply by 6. Because the 1 in parentheses. 6 times 1 times this. And then 9t times 1 times this. And now combine what? Combine like terms. Your squiggles out in front. 6t plus 9t is 15t to the fourth. Plus 9t minus 6. So your final answer is your junk out front times this. Now let me go ahead and warn you. There may be some problems in the homework or the test that they didn't factor a 4t squared, they just factored out a t squared. Is that okay? Yes. That's, that's just a, I don't know why they would do that, but I would factor out a 4t. So I will be lenient on if you factored out a 4t and they just factored out a t squared or 4t squared and they just factored out a t squared. I'll be lenient on that. Okay, so that's your answer there. Okay. <coughs> Next problem. And it's similar to the one we just did. 5x minus 3. Oops. That don't look good. Minus 3. This is extremely difficult. To the fourth power times 3x squared minus 5 to the negative third. All right, take a minute and work on that.
All right, that's what you get when you use the product rule. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And that's going to give you negative 3 times 6x is negative 18. Got to watch me there because sometimes I multiply 3 times 6 to get 24. <laughs> negative 18x times 5x minus 3 to the fourth power times... 3x squared minus 5 to the negative fourth power. You know, check me, make sure I didn't leave out anything. Plus, well, 4 times 5 is 20. And I'm going to put this one first. So 5x minus 3. to the third power and 3x squared minus 5 to the negative third power. Okay, so what's in common with 18x and 20? 2. Two. So factor out, a, you could factor out a negative 2 if you wanted to. You can factor out a 2 if you wanted to. It doesn't matter. Since this starts with a negative, I'm going to factor out a positive 2. So factor out a 2, and that does not have an x. So that's it. What's in common with 5x minus 3 to the 4th and 5x minus 3 to the 3rd? You pick out the lowest exponent. Good. And what's the lowest exponent with negative 4 and negative 3? Negative 4. Negative 4. Now I'm going to put this in brackets because that's what we're factoring out. And I'm also going to color it yellow because that is part of your answer. 
I'm just not going to write it five times. All right, now let's do the division. What's that negative 18x divided by 2? Negative 9x. And 5x minus 3 to the 4th divided by 5x minus 3 to the 3rd is what? 5x minus 3 to the 1st or just 5x minus 3. And these two cancel. Plus 20 divided by 2 is 10. 5x minus 3 and 5x minus 3 to the third power cancel. And then what is negative 3 minus a negative 4? Be positive one. Classic mistake students make. Negative three minus a negative four. You're dividing, right? Are we not dividing when we factor? Mm -hmm. What do you do with exponents? You subtract them, Hubert. That's right, class. So that would be negative three minus a what? And minus 3 minus a negative 4 is negative 3 plus 4, which is the first power. And that's what's going to get you on this problem is that one right there. So that leaves us with the outside. And this is going to give us negative 45x squared plus 27 x be a minus plus that's right minus plus plus 30 x squared minus what 50. And something's wrong. 5x minus 3. Oh, I didn't factor out a 2. Okay. I got a different answer on mine because I factored out a 2 here. That's fine. And that's going to give you a squiggle line. And negative 45x squared plus 30x squared is what? Negative 15x squared plus 27x minus 50. And that would be 30, 54, yeah. Now again, if you don't factor out the 2 here, I will not mark it wrong. I just, I just factored it out. I don't think they factored it out in the homework because I did the problem and got the right answer and I got a negative 30 right here and a 54 and a 100. So I didn't factor out a 2 on the, on the, when I did it. Okay. So this is your answer, or you could have just this and this times negative 30x squared plus 54x minus 100. So does that help with some of your unit 2 questions? Those are probably the three hardest questions on the homework, probably. So if you can do these... You can pretty much handle the rest of them. All right, let's move to unit three or unit five, whatever we're on. Don't get technical with me. Y'all know where we are. All right. F of X, I want you to sketch it. I want you to find the intersections. And I want you to find the area. F of X is equal to X squared minus 4X. And g of x is equal to 2x. Find the area. 
Now, of course, you need to sketch it first, and then you need to find the intersections, and then you need to do the calculus to find the area. So you might want to do complete the square right quick if you're not going to use your calculator. Do complete the square and figure out where that parabola crosses the y-axis. x squared minus 4x plus 0, that means it's sitting, on the, sitting at the origin. But you already knew that, right? Y'all lie. Y'all worse than Hillary. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bernie's not quitting. Bernie's going on. I'm glad. I'm glad for Bernie. But it don't look like she's going. He's going to derail her. She's going to derail herself. I hope she does. Because I'd much rather have Joe Biden in there, or, or uh, even Bernie Sanders than Hillary. I hope. Or they're going to end up dead. Have y'all ever seen the list of people that's died tied to the Clintons? It's pretty scary. Look, Google it. Is there a documentary on that? Well, there's all kinds of accusations about the Clintons and people's mysterious deaths. But I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewis. It all depends on what your definition of is is. Apple juice. You ever notice you can't mix apple juice with any kind of liquor? Yeah. What? Oh, yeah, on a hunting accident. <laughs> that was awful, you know. I remember that. That was awful. But you know what? That happened to a friend of mine. He got shot in the woods, died. And it wasn't, it wasn't with buckshot either. It was with a rifle. I mean, it blew his whole abdomen out. And the train to open the doors for him and stuff. But um, he was in the woods and he went to take a leak and left his gun up against the tree. You never do that. That's I know, you laid on the ground. And he um it, it shot through his gut. It was a shotgun. It went through his gut and came out right below his heart. Did he live? Yeah. But they, the, the guy was like 17 at the time, and they said he tucked his guts back in and walked a mile and, and like passed out at the road or something. Yeah. I'm just sitting there like. Listen, I'm going to tell you. I, I, I was an avid deer hunter up until I got married because I couldn't do it no more. No, I'm just kidding. And uh, I uh, got stuck in a tree one time. Hunting? Mm -hmm. Because my, the bottom part of my. The cord broke on the bottom part of my deer stand, and you know when you do a step deer stand, if you if, 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 if it's not tied on, that sucker goes all the way down. That sucker slipped off my foot and went all the way down. I was stuck in that tree for about four hours. Didn't have no phone because you don't phone because it buzzes and makes noise. You don't you know. <laughs> You're just play to make noise. Gmail has been received. Finally, I called. Uh, I didn't call. I just kept hollering, and my mother heard me because she lives down the road. And uh, you, did she come help me? No. She called my marine buddy, <laughs> which he took pictures. <laughs> huh? Good yeah. So he had to get his deer stand. He brought his deer stand with him so he could bring the other part, my part, up. So he had to climb the deer stand with his deer stand to bring. Uh -huh. I was about 25 feet. Oh, he couldn't make it. 
Uh, yeah, on the side of a hill. Yeah, rolled with two broken legs or broken ankles because I would have landed on the only rock in the woods with my weak ankles. All right, so here we go. We take our handy dandy sketch pad and we look, it looks like this is a parabola, what, on the origin? It crosses at the origin. Let me say it crosses at the origin. But that would be x squared minus, really, sorry, x squared minus 4x plus blank is equal to 0 plus blank. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So that's going to be x minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 4. So negative 2 would be positive 2 and positive 4 right there. Or negative 4. Be opposite of both be negative 4, sorry. Do, 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 do. Be positive 2 and negative 4. And the x-intercepts, well, that's going to be two positive or negative 2. So 0 and 4. No, yeah. 0 and 4. Somebody check the x-intercepts. Um, huh? That's right. 0 and 4. So it looks something like that. There's your parabola. And 2x, well, 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. I'm just trying to. And 3 times 2 is 6. And 4 times 2 is 8. That's probably going to be the intersection point. So we can make that look something like this. So let's set them equal to each other. And that's going to be x squared minus 4x is equal to 2x. Bring the 2x over. That's going to be x squared. Minus what? 6x is equal to 0. And that's going to be x. x minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, I was wrong. It'd be 6. Crosses at 6. x is equal to 0. And x is equal to 6. So it should cross at 3 and 6. So my bad. Y'all just have to use your imagination. So this is 6, 12. 6, 12. And this is 0, 0. So our integration is going to be, and our top function is the blue function. So that's going to be the antiderivative from 0 to 6 of 2x minus parentheses x squared minus 4x dx. Now, what if you put the x squared first? Your answer would come out negative, and you would just say, okay, area cannot be negative. So, I mean, that, that would, that's what would happen. So, the antiderivative from 0 to 6 of 2x. What? I, I, ain't, I ain't taking the integration yet. Will you give me time to finish the problem? God. Minus x squared plus 4x dx. And that's going to come out to be 
what, negative x squared plus 6x? So i got to make all this small. There we go. And that's going to be from 0 to 6 of negative x squared plus 6x dx. And that's going to be negative x cubed over what? 3 plus 6x squared over 2 is what? 3x squared, good. From 0 to 6. And yes, I'll do 0 for you. Let's see, 0 plugged in, I think you'll get 0. So 6 cubed over 3 plus 3 times 6 squared. And somebody give me that number. 36 times 6 is going to be what? 216 or 2? So I don't know what it is. Okay, that'd be 72. Negative 72 plus 72. That ain't going to be 0. What do you come out with? Thank you. So whatever units it is, that's how much it's going to be. If this was centimeters, then it'd be 108 square centimeters. If it was miles, then it'd be 108 square miles. If it was inches, 108. And that is this area right here. Okay, I'm sorry. What did you say? What's the answer? 36. 36. Thank you. 36 square inches, square miles, or whatever the case may be. All right, let's do a nerd. Now, let me go ahead and tell you something, because this book really screws it up. All right? They want, when you do the integration from 0 to 6, it's giving you the area, this whole area right here. The book wants you to break it up into the positive and the negative and the positive. There's no need to do that, all right? The math will do it for you, okay? I'm just going to tell you that right now. I'm not using the book because on that because it confuses people. If you want the area between two curves, this is how you do it, okay? And that's all I'm going to say there. And that's it. Next problem. Let's go with f of x is equal to 12 minus x squared and g of x is equal to x squared minus 6. First thing I would do is turn f of x around. You got a positive parabola and a negative parabola.
I get positive and negative three. So your top function would be negative x squared plus 12. So that would be your f of x. That would be what you're subtracting from. <coughs> Say again. Yes, you could and multiply it by 2. Now there's another way you can do this problem. What's another way? Well, the difference between two curves, you would say y is equal to 0, and you would subtract 0 minus x squared or x squared minus 6. And then you would do y is equal to 0 and negative x squared plus 12. And then you would add those two together. But you would have to have the x-intercepts. That's the way the book shows you to do it. <sighs> Excuse me. So from... I'm going to say 2, 0 to 3 of 12 minus x squared negative parentheses x squared minus 6 dx. And that's going to give you 2 from 0 to 3 of 12 minus x squared minus x squared <coughs> plus, plus 6. And that's going to give us 2 antiderivative from 0 to 3. Good gracious. Make sure it's not my mom. Nope. Uh, 12 plus 6 is 18. Minus x squared minus x squared is minus 2x squared dx. Two times 18x minus 2x to the third over 3, evaluated at 0 and 3. Y'all should be able to do 0. And then that's going to be 2 parentheses 18 times 3 minus 2 times 3 to the third power over 3 and that's going to be 2 times 48 or 43 times 8 no it's 4 54 54 Minus 2 times 27 is 54 over 3. And then that's going to be 3 times 54 is 162. Y'all check me. So that'd be 162 over 3 minus 54 over 3. And that's going to be 2 times, well, 162 minus 54 
is going to be 8 and 16, 98. Somebody help me out. 54 divided by 3 is 18. Yeah. Oh, I didn't need to. I didn't even think about that. Okay. I, I was getting common denominator, so I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so that would be 2 times 54 minus 18. Did you say 18 here? So 54 minus 18 is what, 36? I don't know. What is it? Yeah, and 36 times 2 is 72. So your area between those two curves, which I don't know what they look like, but it be something, let's see, 0 here, x squared minus 6. No, that would be 6. That would be down here, right? Something like this. And then this is 12 up here. <coughs> Y'all, does that look something like it? Yeah. And then you have your two intersection points. So the area, well, they're supposed to be symmetrical, um, is in here is 72 whatever units, square units. Where did you get the two from? Like, where? There's twos all over the place. Like, look at the top right where you wrote FX and GFX. Like, when you started to do the blood. Yeah. Okay, this negative comes over here. Becomes a positive 2x squared. What's x squared plus x squared? 2x squared. That's where the 2 comes from. It's going from 0 to 3 because we're, instead of going from negative 3 to 3. Yeah. I just did this side right here oh, and multiplied okay. it by 2. Oh, okay. Remember, we did that the other day. Okay? Or you could go from negative, you could change this number right here to negative 3, and then that would take the 2 off. Or you could do f of x is equal to 0, and do this line but you would have to have the x-intercepts here and here. But then you would still have to do, then you'd have to do 0, f of x is equal to 0, and this function, and this function to get the top portion. So you could do that too, but that's, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay, that's digging a pipeline with a shovel instead of a backhoe. Well, yeah. So there's three ways to do it. Multiply the symmetrics by 2, go from negative 3 to positive 3, or find this area, and then find this area, and add it together, which that's the harder of the three. All right, try one more. And the reason I'm giving you three of these is because the book that I use and the book that we use, that this book doesn't give you a lot of these for homework, so I need to give you a couple in your notes for the test. I'm sorry, you're not supposed to use your notes on the test. Y or f of x, and you're in class test, you're not going to pass anyway, so x plus 2, and g of x, is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 2.
Uh, yeah. So when you're starting off here, how do you know when you need to do completing the square versus just... Well, see, completing the square gives you your x-intercepts. And you wouldn't need to know that um, on this one unless the x-intercepts are your border. Like the x-axis would be your border. So if you were doing... If you were doing the parabola and it was going across the x-intercepts here and here and they said they just want the area above the x-axis, then you would need to find the x-intercepts because that would be your points to integrate. You see what I'm saying? So it, it helps to draw it out because then you can see what you need. Do you need the vertices where they intersect or do you need the x-intercepts? And in this case, you probably, the only reason you would want the x-intercepts in this case is just to, just to uh, sketch it. You wouldn't need the x-intercepts for uh, borders. Because it looks like to me, x, x plus 5, talking about 0 and 5. No, let's see. I am think I messed up. 6x minus x is 5x, right? Minus 4. Yes, minus 4. I knew something was wrong because I knew that didn't look right. Yeah, bring this over, it'd be a negative. So that'd be x squared minus 5x minus 5x minus 4 is equal to 0 be a positive vote. So you could use it here to tell where, so you got it equal to zero. When you set it equal to zero, this is y is equal to zero, so that means that you're finding the x-intercepts. So in this case, you would use right here, so that'd be x. Now, you don't have to, but the reason I tell everybody, when, when you're in my math 110, when you're in my math 111, when you're in my math 130, my math 140, anytime, there is no factoring unless you have to factor. I tell all my students, when you have a trinomial, use complete the square all the time so it's second nature to you besides factoring. So that's why I tell students to use complete the square all the time. So in this case, that'd be x squared plus 5x plus blank is equal to 4 plus blank and that's going to be 5 halves 5 halves squared is 25 fourths so that'd be 25 fourths and 25 fourths so that'll give us x plus 5 halves quantity squared is equal to 16 fourths plus 25 fourths So our vertex, we can get right here, x plus 5 halves quantity squared is equal to 41 over 4, which is 10, basically. So here our vertex is, and we'll write that up here, um, of this function is that, but you really don't need that. You need where it crosses. So x plus 5 halves is equal to, well, the square root of 40. Square root of 36 is 6. So that's going to be positive or negative 6.2 or something like this. Positive or negative. Somebody, what's the square root of 41? 6.4. Okay, I was wrong over 2 and then x is equal to positive or negative 6.4 minus 5 over 2 and 6.4 minus 5 is 1.4 and that's 0 0.7 so 0.7 and 2 uh, I'm sorry negative 6.4 minus 5 is negative 11.4 and that'd be what 
negative 11.4 is 5.7, negative 5.7. So that should be your intersection points. Or you can just check it. Check it on the graph. I'm sorry. Let's just graph it. Yeah, that's what I got. 0.7 and 5.7. Negative 5.7. Should be. Huh? Okay. That's like all you needed your answer. Well, yeah. Well, this is where they cross. This is where the this function crosses this function. It should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got a... Now, if you wanted to find where this crosses the x-axis, then that would be 0. 0 is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 2, and then do the vertex, and then we can do that to find out how to sketch it. Because I'm going, I don't have a graphing calculator, so I'm doing this. So that's going to be x squared plus 6x plus blank is equal to 2 plus blank. What's the y-intercept of this function? Negative 2. So half of 6 is what? 3. 3. 3 squared is 9. 9. And that's going to be x plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 11. And there's your vertex. Your vertex is equal to negative 3 and negative 11. And then take the square root of 11. Square root of 11 is 3.2. What is it? X plus 3 is equal to positive or negative. What's the square root of 11? 3.32. 3.32. And 3.3 minus 3 is 0.3. And negative 3.3 minus 3 is negative what? 6.3. So now we've got our x-intercept, we got our vertex, and we got our y-intercept. So let's see what happens when we graph it. Let me get my handy dandy. Let me make this smaller. And group. And move this up a little bit. There we go. And move this there. There we go. So I take my handy dandy straight line maker. And we got a point at. Negative 3, negative 11. Negative 3, negative 11. Way down here. My y-intercept is what? Negative 2. And my y-x-intercept is 0 0.3 and negative 6.3. So is that what it looks like? which sucks the way I'm drawing it. But. And then this guy, x plus 2, is a 1 to 1 45 degree angle at y-intercept of what? 2? So 1, 2, and it's a 45 degree angle. So straight line maker, red. Something like that. Now tell me what y'all's graph looks like. Does it look about the same? Now my, it may not be proportioned right, but you're looking for an area in here. Now I got negative 5.7 and 0.7. That looks about right because this is 0.3, so 0.7, that'd be right there. 
So that's what y'all get. Now, when you do the graphing calculator, do you get the same thing? Exactly. Okay. So there's your intersection points. So we're going from negative 5.7 to 0.7. I would not use the, you don't know if it's symmetrical. It'd be symmetrical around the line of symmetry here, but I wouldn't, you're going to have to do these two numbers. So antiderivative from 0.7, I'm sorry, 0.7 is your positive number. And negative 5.7 is your lesser number. Of your upper function, which is your red function, x plus 2, minus your lower function, which is x squared plus 6x minus 2. The x. And that's going to give you the antiderivative from negative five point seven. to 0.7 of x plus 2 minus x squared minus 6x plus 2 dx. Check me. Negative x squared minus 6x plus 2. Dang old carpal tunnel. All right. And that's going to be 0 0.7 to negative 5.7. And I'll go ahead and combine, let's see, x minus 6x is negative 5x. And x, right, or negative x squared. And plus 2 plus 2 is what? Plus 4. So that'd be the antiderivative negative 0.7 to negative 5.7 of negative x squared minus 5x plus 4. And then take the deriv antiderivative of that, and that's going to be negative x cubed over 3 minus 5x squared over 2 plus 4x, and then evaluate. And I didn't evaluate it, so I don't know what the answer is. We'll finish it tomorrow. Okay? Let me stop this so I can get it downloaded. Hold on, Jim.